Barack Obama is in the news again. He uh, attended a um, somewhat ironically titled conference on disinformation. <laughs> the conference was sponsored by the Atlantic Monthly, which, by the way, has been one of the chief purveyors of disinformation. They've been part of the Russia collusion hoax. In fact, <laughs> one of the uh, Atlantic writers, Franklin Four, was the source of putting out all the lies that were concocted by the Hillary Clinton campaign, by this uh, guy Sussman, uh, by Christopher Steele. So the Atlantic were the not only the dupes, but I think the, the willing collaborators of these lies. And uh, But this conference was in conjunction with the Ch University of Chicago Institute of Politics. And of course, they trot out good old Barack Obama, who can be always counted on. I mean, this is America's leading con man. I mean, there's, a, there's competition. Stacey Abrams is in that competition. Hillary Clinton, there are others. But I think Obama owns the title in part because he's able to kind of put that pompous expression and look to the left and he looks to the right. Uh, it's, it's kind of his style. It was, it was a little bit uh, befuddling when it first came out in 2008. But of course, by 2012 and later 2016, everyone had sort of seen through it. It's like the con man who's like fanning out the cards. Take a look. Well, you know, we kind of know the routine by now. Well, let's look at Obama. And he's talking about disinformation, and, and here he goes. It's something I grappled with. <laughs> Imagine Obama grappling with disinformation. During my presidency, I saw it sort of unfold, and that's the degree to which information, disinformation, and misinformation was being weaponized. <laughs> Well, let's start with, let's look at that and analyze. I mean, you have to realize how that these people don't even think about words. How can information be weaponized? It can't be. Information is, is basically information. Uh, it's like the information contained in DNA or the information in an equation or the information of factuals. How do you weaponize information? Then there's disinformation and misinformation. And again, these are used as synonyms, but it would seem to me that there's a critical difference between these two. Namely, uh, misinformation is if someone is misinformed. Someone says something like, oh, you know, I, I thought you were in your 40s, Dinesh. I'm like, no, actually, I'm going to be turning 61. You're misinformed. That's misinformation, but that's not disinformation. Now, of course, if the Indian government puts out some press release falsely stating that I'm in my 40s for some nefarious purpose, presumably that would be official government propaganda. And for that reason, it could be counted as disinformation. But, you know, you find that people like Obama have now um, incorporated these words and, and kind of um, melted them together, uh, I think, ultimately, uh, to cause confusion. Let's continue with Obama. Um, and he says, and we saw it, meaning Obama says, we saw it, this problem in his time, but I think I underestimated the degree to which democracies were as vulnerable to it as they were, including ours. <laughs> so uh, Obama miss, um, underestimated how dangerous this misinformation and disinformation. Well, if disinformation can only come from the government, then the disinformation in the Obama administration must have been coming from him, uh, or from the Obama administration itself. Who else could it be coming from? Is an ordinary citizen capable of producing disinformation? How? Um, now, misinformation is nothing, uh, is a word that basically means error. And how can error be by itself a threat to democracy? Because think about it. What you have in, in democratic politics, and democratic politics are by definition messier than aristocratic or monarchical or even authoritarian politics, because in authoritarian countries, no argument is allowed. The people aren't even consulted. Who cares what they think? Uh, and so, um, but in, in a democracy, people are fighting over what is the truth? What, which policies work better? And there are competing claims, factual claims, claims of interpretation. Uh, sometimes the facts are known, but many times they're not, uh, particularly in situations where you have something like COVID, which kind of springs on the scene, a new virus of, of unknown uh, origin, um, where exactly it came from. So naturally, people are going to uh, propound all kinds of theories. Well, this would seem to be the normal give and take of democracy. Um, when, when the left says, as Obama does here, that there's misinformation uh, and disinformation, what is an example of this misinformation that's being put out on the right 
that is supposedly a danger to democracy. Uh, even if the right says things that are wrong or turn out to be wrong, that doesn't inherently de uh, threaten democracy. That's merely misinformation, which presumably can be corrected with accurate information. I mean, the whole argument for free speech is that when you have a contest of truth and error, truth is going to win because truth ultimately is nothing more than a verbal expression uh, of reality. And so reality in this, in the end, asserts itself, right? So if I say, that if you stick your hand in the fire, it's gonna burn you, uh, that can't be misinformation because at some point someone's gonna stick their hand in the fire and they're gonna go, ouch, and reality turns out is accurately described by what I'm by what I'm saying. On the other hand, if someone denies it, they're providing misinformation, but if they stick their hand in the fire, they're gonna have the same result. So this is the basis of the assertion that truth wins in the end. Obama doesn't seem to believe it. These are people who wanna shut down their opponents. If they're, my opponents can't talk, I win. If my opponents don't get to organize, I win. If I can censor my opponents, I win. And that's the psychology that Barack Obama not only has articulates, but has now brought ultimately to the Democratic Party as a whole.